and supplication in the spirit. They were in charge of the door. Let's go to 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 Coeck because I, I want to move there. I, I, I really pray that y'all all are receiving this because this is not where I want to dwell in town. Coeck had he had uh, he had he had quite a few sons. First son, the oldest was Amram. Okay. Then there was Izar, there was Hebron, and then Isaiah. Now Amram is the one that gave birth to Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. That's why I said Kohath is doubly blessed. Because we have the Kohathites, but then we also have the priesthood. Do y'all see that right there? And altogether they were known as the Kohathites. What they were in charge of was the sanctuary, the Ark of the Covenant, the table for showbread, the candlestick, the golden altar, the brazen altar, all the vessels belonging to that. Because when you would go into the uh, courtyard, you had to come in at the east gate. And the first thing that you saw once you entered in through the east gate was the brazen altar. That's where all the sacrifices were performed by the priests. Then after the brazen altar was the brazen laver, where the priests, they had to wash before going into the tabernacle. Because if they went in without washing, God would kill them. Because he has an order. Today, the Kohathites are those who assist in the temple services. In the flow of the service. This would be our prophets. Do y'all see that? I got the apostle, I got the evangelist. Here's where we see our prophets because they assist in the flow. This is where we see our musicians. And we see our, our dancers and we see our singers. Why? Because of Miriam. Miriam was a bad mama jamma. Even though she had a twist of sideways in her, she was bad. Because when they come out of Egypt and they cross through the Red Sea, the Bible says, watch this, she took her tambourine, musician, and then she started singing, singer, and then she started dancing, dancer. And who went out after her? A group of ladies and they got their temple and they start dancing together. There's the first dance group in the Bible. It ain't rhythm. I'm kind of, I'm kind of real sensitive in this area of music ministry, of the singing, the creative, and the performing arts. That's what the ministry, His Word, His Way, is founded upon His Word. St. John chapter 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word. So we do His Word as He says, do it. And He's given it to us in the creative arts, performing arts, that spoken word, that's dance, that's playing, that's singing. He's given it to us in that way. And I'm very sensitive to this. Watch this because we have a responsibility to assist in the flow of the service. Yeah. 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 One false move can jack the whole service up. Yeah. 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 One foul attitude is all it takes. Yeah. One negative word is all it takes. Yeah. For you to miss the shift. When God moves. Now the thing that I loved about this. When I was studying. They were talking about the singers and the musicians. Watch this. They didn't do what the rest of the Levites did. Because their duties required of them. 24 hours a day. 7 days a week. Because that's how reverential. The Israelites were regarding worship. I'm not supposed to. I'm going to say it like this. I've been saying it all the time. I'm not supposed to be working at shelter. I'm working at shelter because the church and the people in the church, the priesthood, have not been giving a righteous offering. That's why we can't be in full-time ministry just yet because we still have physical needs. I hope I'm saying something. I hope I'm helping somebody right there. I'm working at shelter because the Lord opened that door and gave me that job. Why? Because I didn't even put in no application. They called me. So I know it was the Lord. And he's made a way for me to walk through that door. Watch this to make a way for me to walk into full-time ministry when he releases me. Y'all ain't saying that. You better know wisdom and timing. I know I'm saying something. They were so into the worship of God that it could not have any impurities. They spent all of their time learning how to play the right music. 
learning how to sing the right song. Y'all yeah. ain't saying nothing. Yeah. You can't sing every song in every church because every church is different. Well, why we can't sing that though? Because this ain't your church. And it ain't mine either. It belongs to the Lord. And the Lord has set the senior pastor over the house. So it's whatever the senior pastor will want. And I'm going to get to that in just a second. Okay. Some people don't like that. And I'm going to prove it right here. Second Kings chapter 3, 15. I'm not going to read it. Elisha said, bring me a minstrel to play for me. A musician. He wants a singer. And the Bible said when the minstrel came, the hand of the Lord moved on the prophet. And he began to prophesy. Singers and musicians and dancers, when we sing, when we dance, when we play, the preacher, the pastor ought to feel like prophesying. Pastors, I hope I'm helping you. They don't want to get up behind some old dry dance song. I know because I've been crushed. I had to learn the order. I, I'm saying something. If you don't want, if you don't want that side look from the pastor, you better learn what the order is. Watch this. Here's the order. The songs of the children of Israel, watch this, were so different from the songs of the world because they gave their life over to learning proper worship. How can I say this? Because when they went into Babylonian captivity, the Babylonian said, sing us one of your songs. They was making fun of them, but watch this. They recognized that their songs were different from their songs. Because of who they were singing to. The one true God. Our music ought not sound like the music of the world. I just hit that. Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Because the prophet got to prophesy. The word that will cause somebody's eyes to be open, that will cause somebody's broken heart to be mended. Okay, all right. I, I, I think I've, I've hit that. We got to come up, musicians and singers and dancers. We got to come up. We got to come up. We've got to come up. I'm sick and tired of seeing musicians and singers run out on their pastor. When they need them. Why not? Yes, Lord. Okay. All right. Here's where we find the, the in the Kohathites, watch this. I gotta get back. We find custodians and janitors because they assist in the flow of worship. Now y'all know here at United Community Cathedral, you better not let Bishop Russell Larry Freeman come in here and it be all dirty and messed up. Ain't nobody gonna have a good day. Because he understands that there is an order to the service. And if the church is in disarray, there can be no order. I hope I'm making sense. So when I come in here, even though I'm a I'm an overseer, I ain't got no problem with picking up a broom. Okay, I just said something right there. Because see, some of us are too high and mighty to pick up a piece of paper off the floor and it shouldn't be there. Some of us are too high and mighty to scrub a toilet, to clean the mirror, to wash the window. That assists, watch this, in the flow of the service because of the presentation. That's why they said when they looked to Zion, they didn't see the dirt and mess and filth, they saw God. The sound and audio technicians, they help with the flow of service. Because I'm telling you, listen, that's it. I thank y'all for what you do because y'all can make or break us. Let them have an attitude and, you know, because people are well, come on and turn it up, turn it up, turn it down, fix this, turn that. <laughs> you catch them? Listen, because, listen, I don't know about, I don't know about them, but ain't nothing good in me except for Christ. So if you catch me on the wrong day, you might get what's not good. Receptionists are found here. Secretaries are found here. They assist with the flow. The cooks and the bakers and the deacons, they are found here. Then we get to the third division. I hope I'm not taking too much time. I hope I'm not. We get to the third division, uh, uh, to the actually to the fourth division, which is Morari. And I have not forgot the first division. I'm coming back to that.
but we, we find Morari, and here, of course, Overseer Dean has talked so wonderfully that his name translates out to mean bitter, but it also meant the strength of God. So whenever they call Morari, man, you bless my soul. He said, they were saying, hey, bitterness, the strength of God. <laughs> hey, loneliness, the strength of God. They were calling them by name, but reminding them of what they possessed. The strength of God. Why? Because they were in charge of the boards for the tabernacle, the bars and the pillars and the sockets and everything that pertained to that. Here, today, the Morites, these are those who provide structure to the church. This would be church and public administrators. This is where we would find our overseers and our finance department. This is where we would find our repairmen. I hope I'm making this clear. I'm trying to help us to see it's somewhere for all of us to be. This is where we find our supervisors and our officials, our judges and our scribes, those of you that write, our writers, our elders. This is where we find our church mothers. They help to provide structure because they got wisdom. Okay, okay. That's why, do I need to say it? Do I need to say it? That's why so many are falling out of the order of God because the church mothers are not imparting the wisdom of God. For structure and order. Do y'all see what, I, what the Lord is saying to us? He's wanting to restore this order in his church. Because he wants to present to himself a glorious pride. Without spot or wrinkle. Right now we got too many spots and too many blemishes. I'm saying it because I'm in the body of Christ. You're in the body of Christ. We're being called to order. That we can spread this thing out. They provide structure. Let me go to the first division and then I'm gonna to get to, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna close this out and make sure that I have given to us what we need. The first division is the priesthood. Because the Bible talks about when, when God was talking to Moses, he gave him the instructions for the priest and, and how they were to serve and what they were to look like. Boy, I can't wait to teach on garments and what they look like. The base foundation which you see is this white cassock that they have on, which is representative, again, of the righteousness of God. Okay, okay. <laughs> then they were given the ephod and the robe of blue, which is representative of heaven, but also God's authority. Okay. And then their ephod was made of all the four colors that you see, the red and the and the blue, the scarlet, the purple, and the fine twine linen, gold. Okay, we'll talk about just that, what they look like. Now watch this, Aaron was appointed as the high priest and his son served as common priest. Okay, this is the order, this is the order of God. Now the common priest, they only officiated in the outer court. They could go into the first apartment of the tabernacle, which was the holy place. But only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest could light the menorah, which was the lampstand for light in the tabernacle, because they had to see. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You gotta have vision if you're gonna work ministry. The high priest was the only one who could burn incense on the golden altar, which was in the holy place. Because the brazen altar for the sacrifices was in the outer court. But the golden altar was in the holy place, which is where they burn the incense. This is where the prayers are sent before God. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. The high priest could do that. The common priest could not. This is why, watch this, this is why Nadab and Abihu got killed. After their, their seven days of consecration, because God told Moses, consecrate Aaron and his sons to the priesthood. Yeah. And then he said, seven days, he gonna consecrate you. Y'all ain't never seen no seven day consecration. Y'all ought to thank God for the six the hours that we spent. Wow. After their seven days, the eighth day when they were to serve, in the priesthood, watch this, Nadab and Abihu got killed. They fresh into their consecration and got killed because they stepped out of the order of God. 
by burning the incense on the golden altar. The Bible says they offered strange fire to the Lord. Now watch this. In the time when they were offering the sacrifices, God sent fire down from heaven to consume the sacrifice. They made their own fire. They made an unholy fire. Because the fire of God knows how to purify us to where we're not destroyed. Because they offered a strange fire, God said, I'm going to consume you now with my holy fire. And, and separated their soul from their body. Oh, Lord. Okay. They were in charge of the offerings, the sacrifices, the table of show bread, and the day of atonement. That's when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies. He only went in one time a year, and that was at Yom Kippur. Now, the thing that blessed me about Yom Kippur was that I learned that all Jews, all Jews celebrate Yom Kippur, even the most, uh, 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 even the most wrong Jew, even the one that's not dedicated to the order of, of the Jewish customs, the ones that don't fully adhere to it, on Yom Kippur, they stop all their business transactions because they understand that God is still working in atonement on their behalf. They understand that God has an order that was set from generation to generation to generation. Generational transfer. Today, the priesthood, those that operate in it, these are the ones that are in Christ because of what I've explained earlier. If you're in Christ, you're a new creature. You're the priesthood. That's what I said. But this is also where we will find uh, anybody who declares the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, this is where we find our pastors. This is where we find our teachers. This is where we find our bishops. This is where we find our intercessors. You can also see the apostle on all four areas because they govern it all. They operate it. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? They operate in it all. Jesus. These are the four divisions of Levites. I love it because the Levites were chosen by God. Now, this is why I'm going to pull that pen out that I stuck in earlier. God said, I'm choosing the Levites for me. They're going to be all mine because I have to redeem the firstborn that I slaughtered in Egypt. Because all the firstborn, all the tithe, belongs to me. And because I've killed the tithe, I've got to restore, oh, shut up, I've got to restore it. So he chose those who stood for righteousness. He chose those who stood for holiness. He chose those that have a yes Lord no matter what. Now after he chose them, he said, I'm going to give them to Aaron and his sons to assist them in the priesthood. Now, they could never officiate as priests. All they could do was minister to the priest. All we can do is minister to the pastor. All you can do is minister to the pastor. Why is that? Because you're not a pastor. <laughs> when you become a pastor, he'll send you some more Levites. Because he's still redeeming the firstborn. Because the pastor is not called to wait tables. You're called to the ministry of the word. It's my job right now to wait the table. It's my job to sweep the floor. It's my job to come to prayer service. It's my job to be in choir rehearsal. It's my job to perfect and protect worship. It's my job to carry the weight. Because I've been given to the pastor. I hope I'm saying something that's helping us. For those of you thinking, well, I ain't got to do that. Yes, you do. If you're in Christ. And if you ain't, you're probably trying to come in either from the west side or the north side or the south side, and that makes you a thief and a robber. Because there's only one way in at the east gate. Through 
of the priesthood. That's why he makes us kings and priests. So that we can go beyond the veil into the holy of holies. Before the ark of the covenant. This is the ark of the covenant, but here's the mercy seat. Their wings are covered so that God does not see our sinfulness. Because it's the holy of holies. And if you're going to go there, you've got to be holy and you've got to be right. Okay. Holiness is still right. The Bible says, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. <laughs> come on, come on. The work of the Levites predominantly pertained to the tabernacle service. I, 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 I got to move, I got to move. They were the guards of the sacred tent, the tabernacle. They were in charge of the spiritual welfare of the children of Israel. The Levites, they were in charge of the worship of God. And the Lord starts dealing with me in regards to this. Now, this is kind of where I can kind of lift up just a little bit from the from the pages because they were chosen by God himself to do his good pleasure. Now watch this. God calls the Levites into him, to himself. He gives us this exclusive relationship that he does not give to the other 12 tribes. This is why Moses could speak to God face to face because he was operating in his Levitical rights. Because God had called Levi to him. This is why God can speak to you. Because he's called you in. He has a word for you. The service of the Levites was connected to the worship of God. Because Levi means joined. It means connected. So when he called them into service, he was calling them into worship. Their service was their worship to God. Yes, the worship of God deals with God's nature. Amen. I hope I ain't putting nobody to sleep. Now watch this. In this relationship that God has set up, this exclusivity, who does he choose? He chooses males All right. All right. to come into him, to have this exclusive relationship. He put the male sex in the priesthood and in charge of the worship. Uh -huh. Okay, going somewhere with that. He called them to go into the tabernacle. They would go in as a part of their worship. They would commune with God. They would have intimacy. God would impart and they would become pregnant with the blessing of God. Yes, and they would come out with the word of God. 